Hey guys, my name is Shana and I'm a first time mom and I'm just sharing my experiences with you as I go along on this journey of parenthood and motherhood. And this week's video is talking a bit about my experiences so far, nine weeks in. And can you believe it? It's been nine weeks since I've had my little munchkin and he's such a bundle of joy. Love him to death. <sighs> he's a handful, but he's so sweet. But let's just jump right into this because I need to get a lot of stuff off my chat. <laughs> First of all, learning to find balance. I think that is the main, main thing being a first time mom because I mean, you just came from not having a baby for so long and then you're kind of transitioning into this new phase in your life where it's like, yeah, I have another human being to take care of and you have to get rid of a lot of those selfish habits that you would have had and I mean for a lot of us that maternal instinct will kick in for me it's been the whole sleep aspect and the work aspect and trying to get things done and him being that priority so trying to find that balance you know to say well okay I'm gonna allot this amount of time to do this and then I'm gonna do this it's been a bit challenging to find that equilibrium that's been a bit of a struggle for me yeah so my mind is constantly busy like I find myself thinking about all sorts of stuff concerning him so it's like okay sleep time feed time what time he's gonna wake up um how many bottles of milk do I need to um put out for him when I have to go pump when I have to go cook when I have to do this and that and that and my mind just keeps going so that's another thing as well it's like that constant thinking about him and thinking about his needs and what i have to do i have to keep appointments you know his doctor's appointments his shots he has to get his shots i have to keep on that have to keep reminding myself so what i've been doing is writing down a lot of stuff and putting notifications on my calendar because i write stuff down and i might still forget especially appointments Ugh. and you know you don't want to miss those things. I have my um, Google Calendar that I use to keep reminding me of certain things. So yeah, that's been helping me a lot. I'm still in this phase where I can't believe it's not butter. Like, I can't believe I have a child. Like, what the hell? What? I have a kid. I have a child. I have a pick me. Y'all don't understand. Like, this is just so amazing to me that I have a child like I got pregnant and now I have a baby and it's just like the whole process of this is just still mind-boggling to me like I would look at him while he's sleeping and I'm just like really I made this angel oh my god he is just so cute and then like this morning this morning now he normally wakes up around six o'clock so well <laughs> after the countless times he woke up before to feed but you know he normally like wakes up wakes up at six so this morning i was there with him just lying down next to him and he's just there looking outside and you know cooing and just being so cute and i'm here like wow i am in so much awe of this child right now and i mean as a first time mom i guess you would be in that phase where you just really you know full of love and awe and stuff i mean that might be the case for for some women it may not be the case for a lot of women but for me i just am still wow the funny thing about me being a mom is that i never really planned on it let me get into that so you know sometimes you you know sometimes some children who like when it is i grow up i want to have so many babies and I want to have this and I want to have that and I want to have a family and that was just never on my mind like for as long as I could remember I never had thoughts of having a family or having a baby I mean at some point it probably crossed my mind but it wasn't something that was actively on my mind like I want to have a baby I want to have a baby like I know there are women who want to be mothers like that is their goal they want to be mothers they want to have x amount of kids they know how many children they want to have their 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 mind is really set up and for me it was never a matter of never wanting to have children or i want to have children i was just kind of like in between so whenever people would ask me so 
you, 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 you plan to have children, you want to have children. I was just like, eh, because I didn't want to go through the whole why I'm still on the fence. Because for me, having children is a huge responsibility. For a long time, I wasn't in a space where I was able to properly provide for a child. So it was more about survival for me. And to bring a child into a situation where it's like, you know, I need to make it. I need to be able to feed you and me. And I was just not in the proper mental space for that. So I guess that's why I didn't think about it. But the universe, God is just so amazing. And when it is I got pregnant, I was in a space where... It could happen I was ready for it I accepted it and I was like yes I am comfortable enough in my life now where I can say yeah let's have this baby let's do this <laughs> nothing can stop us now so yeah um that was a big thing so I'd never really thought about it because I mean there's so many aspects to that eh? it's like there were so many things mentally physically emotionally financially especially financially you know, I was just in a space where I was not ready for that. So now I could say, yeah, yeah. I have had to come to terms with building a schedule around my sleep. And nine weeks in, I have found a solution. I know there are a lot of moms who are having difficulty putting their babies to sleep. Let me give you a little bit of a secret especially you first time moms what i have done is actually built a routine to get him to sleep and the routine he got into that pretty quickly within less than a week he got into that routine so basically what i do is at seven o'clock promptly he has a bath every night and that bath actually helps him to calm down you should see this child when he is in that bathtub like nothing else matters in the world he closes his eyes and he basically falls asleep in the tub. I have him in the tub for at least 10 minutes. Massage him. Oh my god. He loves his little massages. So I do that with some oil and then put on his little jammies and I put him to bed. Putting him to bed probably lasts like 20 minutes to half an hour but it's worth it because I get to snuggle up with him. He gets to snuggle up with me. We get to bond. I don't know if y'all could hear him crying right now because it's with his dad. <laughs> But yeah, we get into that and um, he sleeps for, no, he sleeps like about three hours max. I would know when he is going to get up. So within that time, I get some stuff done and I'm prepared for when he gets up next. So I'm not like, oh God, he gets up already. It's like my mind is already like, yeah, he's going to get up at that time. No surprises. And like clockwork, he gets up i think as a first time mom these are things that you need to know yeah so these are things that i have learned nine weeks in and yeah i'm pretty much learning things as i go along i mean he's amazing he's such a sweet little boy and i will share a lot of other things that i'm learning as i go in this journey so first time mom as well you will find a lot of people wanting to give you a lot of advice a lot of annoying advice a lot of advice that probably doesn't pertain to you but a lot of people like to put their mouth in your business and they don't know anything about what's going on with you so that's one thing that you have to keep in mind and you have to look out for because I mean huh, I think what I have done is learned how to just say oh okay for true oh all right cool because I mean a lot of it, a lot of the time as a first time mother especially when people find out that you're a mom for the first time they always want to give you some unsolicited advice that I mean I know you want to help but sometimes you know you might probably want to ask would you like you know just ask me ask me if it is I need X Y and Z help don't just imply and intrude and just mouth off and tell me what you want it could be very annoying and sometimes your advice could be very helpful but it's the execution of that advice is the other part it's like not what you say is how you say it kind of way 
Yeah. Yeah, so that's one thing you have to kind of keep your mind up because I know it might be very, very tempting to want to tell people a piece of your mind. I mean, and accordingly, you can. Um, sometimes it could be your mother-in-law, it could be your own mother, probably, you know, it could be close family and friends are just really, really annoying with it and you would really have to, you know, put some of them in a place. But, um... I'm kind of very very glad that where I live it's away from a lot of people so they don't have access to me like that but I know there are a lot of you who live with your family you have a huge family and a lot of people want to have the input into your life you have to create those boundaries where you're like thanks but no thanks let me try and figure out certain things to myself because if it is I don't how would I know you know what I'm saying? And sometimes your advice is pretty much wacky. And that's going to be another video. So stay tuned for that. Um, These are just a few things that I have been... Yeah, and I wanted to share with you. So thanks for watching. And tune in next time for another video. Bye, guys.